All right, guys. Hey there. Hello, everybody. It's Vanessa Petronelli here, and I'm with the lovely James Kyson. So uh -huh. awesome. So great to see you in person. I know. <laughs> Zoom. I know. But it seems to be the thing these days. It's become the television screen, the the conference room, the yeah. video yeah. conference, everything. I mean, it's just it's the way to to connect these days with everything right. that's going on. It's crazy. Yeah, and it's been it's been really interesting to see how we've adapted as a community and as humanity you know, during this time to continue to connect and, and be social and be connective. Um, but uh, it, it's, I mean, this is my first time really having a video conversation with someone that I met 10 days ago. <laughs> and uh, we've had some really valuable and powerful conversations on the phone, which I really enjoy. And um, Me too. yeah, I just wanna, first of all, start with just acknowledging just what a special human being you are and Aww. you know the gifts that you offer and bring um so it, it's been such a divine and serendipitous way to connect and and you know meet each other and be introduced so divine so serendipitous and you know i was saying to james when we were on the phone when we get off i feel like i'm on this soul high because when the souls are connecting and they recognize each other, it's like, oh, finally they met in real life type of thing, you know? It's, right, it's, right, it's, yeah. Oh, totally. They finally made it happen. Awesome. Let's have a little party and a little dance. And Right. It's like, oh, it's you. <laughs> it's you. Um, oh, I remember you. <laughs> yeah, in the cosmos. Um, <laughs> yeah, I totally believe we travel in soul clusters and, and you yeah. know, we often travel through different lifetimes, you know? Um, but I guess just to kind of give everybody a little bit of context of how we met, you know, yeah. we, um, you know, we connected on LinkedIn um, and, um, you know, there, there was a, there was a message from you just of, with an invitation, you know, to uh, empower creatives and, and some of the work you do. And, um, you know, I mean, there is a lot of messages that I've received on LinkedIn with, you know, different services and offerings and whatnot, uh, but just the way that yours was, even presented or phrased and I'm not even sure really but something inside me just um, said yeah let's connect and uh, I'm so glad that we did uh, because it's been such a fun and joyous I don't know discovery of uh, just getting to know you and hearing about your work and and how you've been really serving the world through that mm, this the feeling is absolutely so mutual by the way it literally is I mean conversations have to be co-creative, right? We have to be in the, the, the dance together as human beings. So somebody can be really good at conversing and expressing themselves and carrying conversations, but it takes two people to make the conversation really dynamic and powerful. And I always love meeting creatives and artists like yourself who just embody so naturally so much self-awareness and so connected and tuned in i mean honestly i think that people like yourself in the entertainment world and in hollywood who have this ability to hold so much more than just being human there's mm -hmm. something really special about that and i believe that actors and people in this industry they're all channels and there's i think isn't a shakes is it a shakespeare quote or something where they say that actors are are like some of the closest people to God because, or, or they channel God because of the, the crap. I mean, I totally butchered that. <laughs> sure, no, but, no, but I, I totally hear what you're saying because in a way, you know, through our craft, we have to open ourselves up to such a dynamic range of human experiences. Absolutely. And I think the ones that are great at it are the ones that are willing to just uh, be channels for those emotions, those stories, those um, characters and it's also I know for me it has been the number one tool of learning empathy mm. you know uh, not to mention the fact that it saved my life from just some of the dire um, sort of you know emotional pits that I felt like I was just kind of stuck in mm -hmm. um, and I think this is why storytelling is so necessary and powerful especially in today's generation um, 
but it's, it's, it's the thing that taught me how to relate, how to connect and how to have compassion towards other people um, it, that, that no other tool has really kind of, you know, done that because I, it, as soon as you are able to put yourselves literally and, you know, metaphorically in someone else's shoes, I think that's when we realize, we realize, oh, we're all so unique and we all have our individual stories and origins and whatnot. And my God, like we all are going through this journey and, and we all, you know, have pain, loss, joy, um, celebration, and, you know, longing to be seen and heard and loved. And, and it's the thing that we're most afraid of and the thing that we want the most, you know? And, and, and I think once we kind of understand that, you know, I know for me, empathy and, and compassion has naturally grown. Yeah. And you've been open to it. That's, that's why I was so blown away about our conversations, just the level of awareness, the way you articulate the, your empathy and the way you see another individual. It's, it's very unique. And I can see how you have allowed that to, you know, really dive into your craft. And I think that's what also makes an actor really phenomenally talented is the spectrum and breadth and depth of who they are as a human being and how they can hold the different emotions and and the light shadow side of the human experience and the dark shadow side of the human experience and bring that into their characters that's what really makes a very multifaceted and talented individual like you which it, it's so it's so I'm, it was so palpable for me to experience that with you immediately in our conversations. Like I can tell that you really operate from your heart and more than ever, I think like more than ever in our world, we need people like you because um, like, thank you. I appreciate that. I... of course. And, and I'm not just saying that like it's, it, it's people are going to feel it when they listen to this, when they watch this, however it is that they receive it. It's, it's so visceral. It's a genuine, genuine quality. And, you know, in a world that is so full of ego and selfishness um, and fear, you know, finding individuals and connecting with individuals who are really in their heart and care for the human experience and for others is really rare sometimes. And I feel like spirit, God, universe, brought us together to connect and here we are having this conversation and we have the ability for other people to also listen in on it and feel that energy so it's not just you and you and I experiencing it it's more people and I think especially with everything that's going on right now people need it really yeah uh, thank you so much for sharing mm -hmm. that and and also I love what you said about being able to hold the light and the dark and, um, you know, I read a great article last night on Medium that really kind of was able to articulate this in a great way. And I really feel like the time that we're in is that paradox happening at the same time, right? Yeah. Because right now there's obviously a lot of um, inconvenience, suffering, pain, and loneliness, isolation, and frustration, and anger, and sadness happening because of um, because of this COVID situation. And I also think that this is also one of the most important chapters that we're going through in this century as a humanity, as a collective um, consciousness. And, um, and there's a part of me that's in the experience and also kind of like it being able to kind of observe the experience and say, wow, this is necessary. And I know in the long run that that this would be one of the most important markers that we've experienced as a collective, you know? Um, one of the things that came up as I sat with everything that was happening last week, first of all, just so many emotions in me coming up, you know, and, and um, I felt like I had to really kind of sit with it. It was, even though it was very uncomfortable and reminded me a lot of, uh, my Vipassana experience, which is sort of the 10 day silence meditation retreat that if people out there have done it, uh, but just a lot of my own sort of shit that I had to like really look at, right? Like, uh, okay, the industry may be shut down for a few months. Like, what is my identity 
without the industry of Hollywood or acting. Um, and what, what, what do I consider as my purpose, my why, my worth, you know? Mm. And I just, I was faced with all these different attachments that I've had, everything from the convenience of being able to, you know, use my gym to, um, you know, jump, being able to go from like, you know, a, a, a this experience and this class and uh, this gathering. And, and it's just been a really great time of stripping all those things away and just coming, kind of coming back to like, what am I connected to? What am I about? Mm -hmm. And um, I, I, I love to hear how the experience has been for you, but I know for me, I see it as a very necessary experience just for my own personal development. So beautifully said. Yeah. And I really appreciate you from human to human, especially from somebody who is also utilizing this time as a really beautiful opportunity to get more connected to self and to help others become more connected to themselves and who they really are, aside from the identities that we wear every single day from, you know, actor to writer, to director, to coach, to entrepreneur, to business owner, to mom, to dad, you know, it's like, it's, it's stripping all of those things bare and really getting connected to ourselves. I, I really want to tell you, I appreciate you taking so much thoughtfulness and reflection in sitting with those feelings and asking yourself those questions, because that's, really what we need, at least in my opinion, we really need to be doing right now. You know, I think in removing a lot of the distractions and the doing that's happening every day in our lives naturally, this is a beautiful opportunity and gift to know self and to pause and really reset, you know, the trajectory of our lives, where we're going, are the choices we're making, is what we're doing day to day really bringing me joy, fulfillment? Does it feel aligned? Is there something that I would choose differently? It's bringing up all the unhealed, you know, parts of ourselves. It's bringing up the fears, the anxiety, like the ability for us to sit in the discomfort and acknowledge and hold and, and love the parts of ourselves that typically don't get any, I call it airtime, right? They don't get to, to really be seen because we are in so much doing and oftentimes avoidance or distracting ourselves. And it's not a right or wrong thing. It's just, sure. we, we have to make a choice. And I've been saying this on a couple of podcasts um, that I've been a guest on and even a live video the other day, like it really comes down to choice and, and how we choose yeah. to use this time is really going to impact how we move forward into the rest of our lives post this experience we're having with, with the pandemic and the life that we're creating next. And, you know, for me personally, I've been really riding a lot of waves of different thoughts and emotions. Um, mm -hmm. You know, when it immediately started to happen, I definitely felt this surge of, I want to be in service because that's naturally who I am. I want to help people. Like I, there was like the switch that came on. Not that it wasn't, I mean, I've been doing this for 11 years, the coaching work and the healing work. So it's, it's not like I haven't been out of service. It's been my full-time career. But there was an urgency. There was an energetic urgency of, wow, people are really needing support right now. They're really needing strong leadership from somebody who really, if I, if I look back over the course of my lifetime, I think I've been preparing for this my entire life. You know, I, I don't know if you feel this way, but I feel like all the work I've been doing everything that I've been thinking about, all the stuff I've been researching, you know, it's been preparing me to be in service for humanity in a bigger way. And then mm -hmm. last week I crashed. <laughs> <laughs> like I literally crashed. I was like, it was like 10 o'clock on the Friday. I'm going on a podcast interview and like my energy just went, I was like, what is going on? And and that's sort of been the experience I've been having. It was like the initial sort of get into that aligned level of higher level of service and get out there and, and be of service to even more people. It's not that that has diminished, but I feel like my body and my energy is getting affected by what's been going on. And I've needed a lot more rest. 
there's been yeah. a lot more slowing down for me in the last week. I mean, even exercising, I was on such a strong regimen and plan for the last, you know, few months. Even now it's hard for me to even go for like a 45 minute power walk. I'm finding myself mm -hmm. like, oh my God, I feel exhausted just even thinking about doing that. So it's been really about pacing and, and checking in with myself. Like, what do I have bandwidth for right now? How much space do I have available to hold for myself, for others? It's been a really deeper, deeper self-care has been necessary and needed. And what I woke up with feeling this morning was this feeling of how much we take our lives for granted. Yeah. Right? Like, and how much right now, more than ever, all the things that we typically do day to day from going to the grocery store freely to working out at a gym to being able to hug and see people we love, you know, and, and be in physical proximity to them to, you know, um, the certainty of our careers, you know, like feeling like we have the ability to just, you know, audition and get a role or, you know, just get business more easily, you know, all of a sudden things are shifting and changing and there's so much uncertainty and even our health. I mean, just that our bodies, you know, taking our health for granted and being able to wake up every day and breathe. Like there are people who are not able to do that right now. So it's, yeah. it's really an interesting time. Yeah. And I, there, there's so many things that you said that I just, um, you know, it just brought up so many uh, sparks in me. Um, but when you were mentioning about how you, your body is really asking for rest right now, you know, one of the things that I read in the Medium article that I love about how this stage for us as humanity feels like a cocooning stage. And it talked about how the caterpillar, before it goes into a cocoon, sort of eats 300 times its body weight and this sort of unevolved, clumsy, all it wants to do is kind of like take in, take in. And, um, and I feel like we as a society have been sort of doing that, right? I think um, the interesting thing is that, you know, human modern civilization has been sort of the coronavirus to the body that is planet Earth. Mm. And I feel like Earth has been gently telling us, hey, please change your ways. Uh, stop what you're doing uh, uh, because it's sort of hurting not only the Earth, but all of us because we are the Earth. We, it's all connected. And we haven't really listened, you know. So, you know, I feel like right now the feminine energy is really saying, okay, we're going to do a big timeout. <laughs> you know, yeah. I, I have a 16-month-old daughter and, and said, we're doing a big timeout for humanity right now. And this is a time to really kind of go into a cocoon and this masculine sort of energy and desire of like, you know, like doing it, industrializing and productivity is being slowed down intentionally, you know? And I know for me too, I've had to really kind of watch that sort of temptation to say, okay, I, I am now, I've accepted the new reality. I've created a new schedule during this, you know, let's call it the COVID-19 schedule. And I think a lot of, you know, whether you are a, a leader or influencer or just a type A alpha, it's easy to kind of go back to that mentality of like, okay, well, I'm going to try to Tim Ferriss these <laughs> next nine weeks, okay. you know, to, to write, you know, the great American novel, to create many shows and to and to uh, start a new company and, and ideate all these things, which in itself is great. Mm -hmm. And I think that can happen if it's happening in a place of joy and if it's happening with a desire and intent to kind of serve the greater collective or the need. Um, but I think I am making sure that I don't just jump into that place of, of the energy that kind of got us here of like, okay, this is sort of, uh, you know, a nine week chapter where I'm just going to like hack it and, and just create as many things as yeah. possible and not learn yes. any of the lessons that the universe is really showing us during this cocooning stage. And the other thing that I love what you said was, you know, you said in a way you've been prepared for this time your whole life, you know, as a coach mm -hmm. and as someone who is serving the world with your gifts, 
And I feel like that's one of the interesting paradoxes that's happening right now, because it is both, we've never experienced something like this ever yeah. as, um, as humanity, and we have been prepared for something like this our whole lives. And if you look at all of the, the generations, even in the past century, you know, there's been these global tragedies that people had to kind of live through, whether it was the Great Depression, two world wars, you know, uh, whether it was Vietnam War or 9-11. And I think things got a little bit progressively easier, mm -hmm. quote unquote, you know, um, you know, from generation to generation. But I think about the people who've had to go through something like this a hundred years ago, mm -hmm. you know, during the Great Depression or the war, and they didn't even have the luxury to self-quarantine at a home. They've had to, you know, hide in a bunker, you know, right. for a few weeks. Um, they didn't have the luxury of grocery stores where curbside pickup, you know, they right. had to line up, you know, to see if there was things even, there was enough rations to be given out. Mm -hmm. um, and this was all pre-internet, pre-shared resources, pre where people can, you know, connect through online. So, and yet that generation was able to kind of move through it. You know, now it did cause a lot of trauma. And I think, mm -hmm. you know, with the resources that we have now, I think we are, we can and may be able to go through this chapter without so much damage, you know, having done us to us as a collective, but really kind of, you know, do it consciously and in an involved manner. Mm. Uh, but I think, I think this, I think that's why it's so, it's such a great time to kind of like really check in and say, you know what? Yes, I've never gone through this personally and as a collective, and we've all been prepared for this for our whole lives. We have the tools, we have the resources, yeah. and we can go through it. And that's not to discount or dismiss miss people who are dying or sick mm -hmm. and people who are experiencing uh, loved ones um, you know, in pain or having lost to somebody mm -hmm. through, through this time. And... Um, and, and, and like you said, we have the ability, if we really kind of, you know, are, are be willing to be with it, to move through it and, and do it in a way that can be even a greater, that can cause a greater good coming out of this. Oh, so well said. Mic drop right there. <laughs> I mean, so intelligent and so true. It is so true. I mean, we have had so many generations prior to us who have had to adapt and survive in such a different way than we have to in this time of, of global crisis. And it really um, illuminates this idea of, of how blessed we are, even though we are undergoing a very uncomfortable and uncertain time. And, and again, it's like, I always say this with clients and just when I'm teaching, you know, it's all about perspective because what yeah. you've just shared from is from a, an elevated perspective from a consciousness that has the ability to look at this time and to really extract the essence of what the opportunities are here for you, for us as human beings to take this and to evolve and to appreciate and to look back and also see like what the generations before us had to pave for us to get to this place where even in a global pandemic, we have the ability to stay connected. We have the ability to still be fed. We have the ability to, you know, to still even create currency. You know, I know that there's a lot of people who are out of jobs and who've been laid off and who are not working. I completely understand that. And now with these types of video conferences and with, people having the ability to, to create small businesses and entrepreneurships and virtual business. We're seeing, you know, it's not everybody who is getting impacted. We have the ability to create new opportunities for ourselves. If we have, you know, the skills and the desire to do something like that. So we are blessed in a way that there are many possibilities that could happen from this potential crisis that we're in. And it has a lot to do with, you know, our perspective on it. And I also, that doesn't discount either people who are really, really struggling right now and who yeah. are in immense amount of struggle and who were like, well, I don't have the ability to, yeah. <laughs> to. Um, 
I'm, I'm, I'm so glad you uh, said that. And I just wanted to stop the uh, alarm that was going off on my phone. Oh, I didn't even hear it. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I, I really want to also acknowledge and, and say, I'm coming from a place that's, that can be very privileged. Exactly. Right? Both no, of I, us I'm, are, yes. Well, yeah, yeah. I, I have a wife and a baby daughter. Um, and, and, you know, I, I have, you know, resources like my home and, you know, communities that I've been part of, whereas, you know, there are people who are trapped in a very small space. They may be living alone. Uh, they might not have a pet or animal to keep them company. Uh, they may be of age where they're not able to just go out freely mm -hmm. and really have to be at risk of um, just even trying to meet their survival needs met. Right. And right. there are people out there who say, hey, I, I, you know, I have three kids to feed and, and, and I can't work right now. And so um, definitely this is also a time where people are just dealing with the first chakra survival place mm -hmm. of just trying to get through the, the next day uh, yes. and even today so I want to acknowledge all of that and and um, and hope that you know people who are in um, better positions or have maybe more resources to offer you know that we can continue to you know share those and, and think of ways that we can help you know you know the next person our neighbor or those that are in need in our community Absolutely. I mean, it, it is time. It is a time to be of service to yes, reflect and be with ourselves and shift and change and transform what needs to be transmuted and a time to be in service. And so, you know, I know you have to hop off in a moment and I think we could talk for a long time on this and we'll maybe do other parts because this is so good and juicy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I want to just impart that one of the things it's like, how can you be of service to yourself today? And how can you be of service to those who are in need right now? And, and to think about those things, like how can, and, and, and being of service doesn't mean you have to do huge gestures for other people. It doesn't mean you have to spend money. It, it can be something, a small act of service, but the, the heart, the soul, the compassion and the intention behind that when it comes from love, yeah. can be so powerful to another human being. So thinking about that and, and, and reflecting on that and seeing what comes up for you. I mean, that's one of the things that I'm getting out of this, kind of like a full circle of how we started with being genuine and empathic. It's, we can't just think for ourselves. We also have to think about others. And so many human beings are having a variety of experiences right now. And we have to be able to, to see everyone where they are in their experiences and there's no judgment you know i've been saying this a lot like no judgment no shame around that it's we're all in this together but when we're all in this together we also have to be of, of service to each other um in an, in different ways and in different capacities of what is most available for us would you agree with that yeah absolutely and i'm so glad that you said that and um yeah you're right there's so much more to say uh and speak about you know, during these times. And I hope that we could kind of continue this conversation because I know today, I mean, you know, we talked about having, you know, these 23 minute conversations, but my God, I feel like it just went in a second. And, <laughs> and, and all, I, I know for me, it just really sparked all these different thoughts that I know that we can kind of like dive into. And we haven't even, you know, uh, we haven't even started even, you know, uh, I feel like we're just at the tip of the iceberg, you know, yeah. and, and I love to, use these platforms and conversations to, you know, at least help uh, share some of the tools that that's really been working for us. We're helping us. And also, you know, what are things coming up, you know, during week to week, you know, I mean, this may be sort of a nine week process, you know, if we, um, you know, if we take the example of some of the other countries that are kind of like arcing out of the journey, the one that we're sort of like just kind of entering into, I feel like we're, I feel like we've sort of gone into the first week of, you know, this kind mm -hmm. of collective journey that we're going through, at least as a country and a nation. So I would love to continue to kind of hear what's been coming up for you and how you are adapting, you know, sort of week to week and, and what new insights or realizations, you know, have been coming up. 
ditto. I'd love to hear that for you, from you too. I think we could keep going with this conversation. I guess this is like a, a TBC <laughs> dot, dot, dot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Do you want to tell everybody how they can stay in touch with you, James? Is, do you want to share your social media or your website? Yeah, absolutely. I'm at James Kyson, J-A-M-E-S-K-Y-S-O-N on Instagram and Twitter. And uh, you could just put in search uh, James Kyson in Facebook. And, um, and yeah, I'll continue to share these on there as well as some of the other resources that I find helpful. And um, I look forward to continuing this conversation. Me too. Me too. And I'm at Vanessa Petronelli on Instagram at V Petronelli on Facebook, or you can type in Vanessa Petronelli um, on Facebook as well. And yeah, my website is the same as my full name, Vanessa Petronelli.com. So James, thanks so much. This has been so awesome and I can't wait for more. So stay tuned, yeah, everybody. <laughs> Much love, everybody. Thanks for being here.